Hey guys, Kristen Parkhurst here. I get the privilege of leading Community Impact at Legacy Church, and I wanted to connect with you today. As you may or may not know, our five-year goal is to become the best at leaning in during a crisis. And unfortunately, we find ourselves in a global crisis right now. And uh, maybe not all of us are feeling the effects of the coronavirus just yet. Um, maybe you haven't felt a true fear or concern about you or your family. Um, but we do know that this is going to be a far reaching event. And so the stressors of it, the fear and the crisis itself, um, it's going to have some really far reaching ripple effects. And so wanted to connect with you today because in order to bring peace into a crisis, we have to take a few steps of our own. We have to be able to recognize, um, stress in someone else as well as stress in ourselves, um, because if we are currently dysregulated, we cannot help someone else by co-regulating them. We'll talk about terms in a minute here, but I um, came up with this just earth shattering, <laughs> amazing acronym, POP. Uh, when we sense stress right now in, in the midst of whether you're texting with a family member, you're seeing it on social media, or if you are in, um, in an office environment still, um, and you, you know that the peace of the Lord needs to enter in a situation. We're gonna pop P-O-P and I will share with you. The reason we came up with a really cheesy acronym is simply because when we're stressed, our brains are distorted and we actually can't retain as much information. We'll go ahead and grab a pen and paper if you don't have one already. Pause me and come right back. Because <laughs> the first letter, P, pray his promises. Uh, have got to be a people that we, in the midst of these really uncertain times, can claim his promises and pray these um, not only over ourselves but also into the lives of other people because it is a natural thing to have a stress reaction in the midst of all of this and so um, don't let the enemy take this and turn it into something it's not uh, but i want to share with you just a few uh, scriptures and they are going to be in the comments section but Colossians 3.15, I let the peace of God rule in my heart and I refuse to worry about anything. Isaiah 54.14, I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. Philippians 4, 7 and 8, the peace of God which passes all understanding keeps my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus and things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of good report, I will think on these things. Like I said, we'll put these and others in the comments so you can refer back to them in the future. So that's the first letter, P. Next is O, organize our emotions. I don't know if you've found yourself in a state yet where you have not been able to think clearly. I have already found myself in that state a few times, um, just feeling overwhelmed with the amount of responsibility to care for people I love and um, even the people I don't know that I'm not personally responsible for. My heart goes out to communities that are losing a lot of people to this virus and um, need to recognize how stress is impacting our body. So your body is designed to protect you. Your brain specifically was put together so that when you encounter something new, your body has to quickly discern, do I need to respond with the fight, flight, or freeze? Or do I, um, am I okay? Am I safe? And your body is gonna, is constantly making that decision um, all throughout the day. And um, with the coronavirus going on, uh, you might be in a state right now where you don't feel affected and you haven't felt uh, the pinch yet of, of um, how far reaching this is. Um, but let's just take an example of going to the grocery store right now, okay? So what's a typical, maybe slightly stressful, if you have like four kiddos climbing in and out of the cart like I do, um, is not one that evokes this visceral fear in you. Um, maybe you find yourself going to the store. Maybe you're already a little on edge because there's a line out the front door. Maybe you've seen all these pictures of empty shelves. So you're already just kind of feeling like this might not be a good situation. Um, or maybe you're just mad, mad that some people are buying more than you feel they should be. Whatever the case, when you get in there, you're walking through the store and you have a certain idea of what you're buying, your regular items, and you go to that shelf and it's completely empty. So then you find yourself thinking, oh, what am I, what am I going to buy? Okay. Um, 
and maybe you see other people kind of wandering aimlessly <laughs> um, because they might be experiencing this distortion in their brain where they're now under some, some more stress. And now that they are more stressed, they're not able to think clearly. Think clearly enough to think, okay, if the beans that I was going to buy, I cannot buy, what can I replace that item with? And if you go to your plan B and your plan B is also empty, the shelves are, are already gone, um, or maybe the only thing that's left is out of your price range, you know, you know, it's starting to kind of layer on. The stress is layering on, but it can be exponentially worse when you see other people, maybe they're acting stressed out. Maybe they're, um, maybe they have a whole cart of, of things and food piled up and it just does something inside of you. Um, but maybe you find yourself thinking, okay, what do I buy now that everything I normally purchase is gone? Do I need to stock up and protect my family? Like, am I doing my family a disservice by not piling up my grocery cart? Why are these people taking all the dang TP? <laughs> um, so while this isn't normally an issue, our bodies are going to take it as a hit. Um, and this is just a small example of what we're gonna be encountering on a much larger scale. I just use the grocery store because I feel like most people might have had an experience like that that they can kind of um, think back to of some of those moments where you're like, oh, this doesn't feel right. This isn't normal. Um, I think in the weeks and months to come, we're gonna have that, but it's gonna be it's gonna be harder because there's gonna be a lot more emotional things, um, like people losing their jobs, people um, having, you know, running out of supplies, or um, it's gonna be far-reaching. And so, what I'm using as a silly example is the grocery store. I just want you to think back as what typically is not stressful is very likely going to be more stressful now. Time with your kids, cooped up in a home. Um, maybe you typically just enjoy time together, but everyone's going to be a little more on edge than normal. And um, when we have this extensive amount of time with stress, that excess stress, our body takes a hit. And, and these are some of the things that happen. Like I said, your thinking is distorted. So you're walking down um, a grocery aisle to pick up, you know, your plan C item now, and you don't even have that. So you're just kind of staring off into space. You're like, I don't know what to do. Um, your short-term memory is affected. Maybe you went to an aisle to look for something. Now you don't even remember why you're there. Time is distorted. You're kind of wandering aimlessly because you don't even know what time it is. Because when our bodies are in stress, all of these other um, kind of more logical aspects of our thinking go out the window because our body is focused on protecting us. And so things like our short-term memory and, and our sense of time and our, our logic go out the window. Our past is stirred up. So now, what is not typically an emotional experience can be stirred up in all these memories from past, past moments where maybe you've felt threatened in some way are stirred up. And so um, it may not be logical um, to yell at someone in the grocery line. <laughs> um, it may not even be your personality to do that. But in the midst of this excess stress, we're gonna see ourselves doing things we, that we typically don't and maybe we don't even like about ourselves. Um, we're gonna obsess about the future. You might find yourself scrolling aimlessly on Facebook. Maybe you're reading every single news article that you can get your hands on. Um, this is a way of us trying to protect or maybe even you know control the situation to find out as much information as we can. How can I protect myself and my family? Or you're hyper aware of your surroundings. So typically you may not be concerned with what is in someone else's cart. I don't think I've ever looked at what's in other people's carts. But right now I tell you what, I'm noticing you have three packs of toilet paper. <laughs> um, we become hyper aware of our surroundings. Our heart rate might increase. You might feel your hands and feet get cold. Your muscles might tense up. You might find your shoulders up here when they normally just belong down here. Maybe your neck is stiff. Um, you might have more stomach pain. You'll especially notice this with kiddos that um, they may not verbalize that they are afraid of what's happening and maybe depending on how much conversation with you've had or how much they've heard the news, um, just be aware. Kiddos, they're going to feel it in their bodies um, because they're going to have trouble communicating what it is that scares them. Um, but, but what I want to share is that in times of, of fear and stress, our bodies literally cannot receive love. The reason this is super important 
is when you're stressed, when I'm stressed, or when the person that we are trying to care for is stressed, we can't expect them to, to think logically and we can't expect them to receive love that we're giving. Uh, because right now the body says, nope, I'm not worried about connection. I'm worried about keeping this person alive. And um, so when we stress, we regress. So that's another thing to write down. And so that means our um, executive function, and I've shared that. Um, so our logic, thinking clearly about things, it's gone. <laughs> um, it turns off and we're having more of a primal reaction um, to protect ourselves from the perceived threat. Um, let me give you an example of what it means to regress. So as an, as an adult, like we were saying, if you're, if you're at the grocery store, you're in line and someone tries to cut you off, it may not be in your typical behavior to yell at them to get behind you or this is my spot. Um, or maybe you're not much of a honking person, but if you're, um, feeling a little extra stressed in this season, you might be laying on the horn a little bit more. I don't know how it looks in you. We all are going to respond a little differently to the stress and we're going to be triggered by stress differently. Whatever the case, regression is just acting a different age than you are. And sometimes um, it's said half age, you're half age. So an adult acting like a teenager, a teenager acting like an elementary stool, <laughs> stool? No, <laughs> elementary school age child. Um, and then, you know, our, our four or five year olds acting like toddlers. This is typical behavior under stress. May not be typical for them at this time in this age, but under the circumstances, it's normal because their brain is trying to survive. And what may not feel like a life-threatening event right this moment to you, their body is perceiving it that way. And maybe your body is perceiving it that way. Um, so we just have to have grace and understanding that over these next few weeks and months, we're gonna see this in probably all of our loved ones and coworkers at some point People are going, the stress just can't stay bottled up. It's gonna be coming out. And typically it's gonna come out in our homes where we are with people the most and that we um, tend to let them see all of the sides of us. Um, but when we find ourselves unable to make decisions, like I said, spending more time on social media, you've seen these images of restaurants boarded up and um, seeing towns that, that just, it, does, it looks surreal uh, because we're not, used to seeing life shut down like this. But emotionally, how you receive that information, maybe it causes you to start feeling numb, so so afraid that um, maybe you're, you're trying to check out to kind of save yourself from how scary this can kind of be. Shut down emotionally, space out, feel numb. Or maybe the way these emotions are impacting you um, is causing like a shortening of your temper. Maybe you, you're yelling more frequently than you typically do. Maybe you're feeling just more overwhelmed emotionally. Maybe you feel like you need to escape the situation um, more than you ever have before. Um, I just wanna encourage everyone that these are, these are all typical stress reactions. So give yourself grace, give people under your roof grace. Um, because while we're in the midst of this, it's, it's not the time to sweep these emotions under the rug. But in the midst of these spikes of emotions, um, let yourself feel it for a minute. And the reason I say that is if we're going to sweep it under the rug, we're going to have to deal with it later. And maybe we don't ever choose to, maybe we don't want to, but our bodies will. Our bodies will choose that this stressful event is now stored in my body. Our bodies keep score, meaning it will resurface later. Um, so what I just wanna encourage you is let yourself feel the fear for a minute. Let yourself feel the anger. But once we've allowed ourselves to just sit in it a moment and feel how our bodies feel, then we're gonna, we're gonna breathe. Um, when we find ourselves highly stressed and dysregulated, so that dysregulation is when we're, um, we're at a point where our bodies are, are, are outside of our window of tolerance. We cannot handle what's in front of us emotionally, but if we can take a minute to regulate ourselves, and that is um, the ability to, to, to handle a situation, to feel calm, to feel like I've got this, 
um, to get to that point we can breathe and I know that sounds like a silly thing <laughs> to do but the truth is when we're really stressed what's happening is our amygdala is releasing this stress hormone called cortisol and that's telling us to react in some way but we also have a part of our brain that will release oxytocin which is known as the love hormone and so if we can retrain our brain that in the moments when we feel these big emotions whether it's to just check out entirely or a big emotion to yell or to run away um, we can take a minute and breathe and it will remind our brain to release oxytocin which actually calms the cortisol calms the stress it actually will allow us to calm our bodies more quickly um, so in order to do that we just it, it's called box breathing thank you Katie Sunderman for sharing that with me um, where you breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. And um, if we can practice that while we're not currently in a stressed, stressful situation, then that's something that's a habit built into when we do encounter stress in the future, that we're able um, to breathe our way through it. And just like when you get onto a plane, hopefully not any time in the near future, but. Um, you know, you put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on someone else. So this term co-regulation, meaning to help someone else get from this fear brain to a moment of calm and to feel okay inside. When we stress, our body is actually gonna wanna react um, with stress as well. So um, we, take, we take a deep breath in, hold, let it out, hold. And um, that will bring us back um, to where we can we can help other people in the midst of their crisis so that's O, organizing our emotions and lastly is P plan our actions so with all the stress going on there's there feels like an overwhelming amount of things for us to care about and to take care of and um, I just want us to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us who it is that he wants us to care for and how to care for them and we need to organize it ahead of time. We need to plan it so that we're not caught flat-footed um, to where I'm like, well, just let me know what you need. But but really, if we aren't planning, if we're not intentional right now, it's going to catch up to a point where we're not able to, um, to respond quickly enough. And so um, while this is overwhelming, we're going we're gonna to first pray his promises. We're going to organize our own emotions, and then we're going to plan on how we can care for others. But but who are those people? And we're going to ask God to reveal those people to us. So I want you to write down right now, um, just write down the phrase 12 names. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to ask God to lead us to, to, to know who those 12 people are that we need to care for in this season. So it should start with those um, under your roof, your immediate family. Who are the people that live with you? And, and those will be the first people on your list. Then we also need to include the most vulnerable, um, elderly, widows, orphans, single moms, those that are needing food, shelter, medical needs, financial help, people who are mentally ill, folks who struggle with anxiety and depression, and of course, other family and friends. Um, but pray through, who is it, God, that you want me to care for? Because um, what we don't want to happen is for this moment to pass by and the people who could literally know the love of Jesus because we've provided it for them in a real way by delivering groceries, by um, finding that medical supply that is absolutely necessary to someone at a given time, um, or to provide the perfect encouragement via text or phone, video chat. Um, if we miss that opportunity, um, it's it's gonna be really frustrating that, that we are trying as believers to, um, to be the good news, but if life happens, and it's gonna happen, life is happening right now where um, there's a lot of demands on us, and um, so we just have to organize and prioritize, and um, so pray over who those 12 people are. From there, once we know who those 12 are, um, we're gonna talk about the three L's of leaning in. We're almost done. Thanks for sticking with me. Just got a couple more minutes of this. The three L's of leaning in. So the way that we're going to care for these 12 people over this next season. The first L is leeway, which is allocated time to be inconvenienced. Um, linger 
in the front yard, linger on a phone call, linger if you're still in an office place, um, if you're still working, give a little buffer at the beginning of a meeting. Maybe your conference calls, maybe everything's online for you right now. Spend a few minutes at the, at the beginning of a call or at the end of the call, checking in with the people around you. Let there be some free time in your schedule so that when someone says they need help, you can respond. Um, and leave your phone on. Let, let people reach out to you because remember, if someone's experiencing a lot of stress, their um, concept of time is, is a little off. And so someone might be needing you um, at 11 or 12 <laughs> um, because they may not even realize what time it is. Listen. So that's the second L in leaning in. Listen. Allow them to process. Repeating the situation aloud is a very healthy way to process stress and trauma. Um, and so here are some questions. You can write these down. These will be helpful. Um, this will help them to emotionally process. What's been happening? That's all you ask and let them do all the talking. What do you think about this right now? What have you noticed about yourself since all of this began? How do you feel about it now? So these questions are, are beautiful to, to open it up for them to begin processing aloud. Please, we're gonna all do our best to, to withhold advice at this point uh, because this is for them to process out loud. Unless they specifically ask for it. If they say, what would you do or what do you think? Then yeah, respond. Let the Holy Spirit guide that conversation. But the good part of just listening is you don't have to fill in the gaps with, um, you know, words or cliches that we might regret later. Um, so if you want to offer some encouragement, a phrase like, that sounds like a normal response in this circumstance, is, is really going to bring um, just some peace to the situation that, yeah, our bodies are going to react really, really crazily in this, um, in this season, and that's okay. Lastly, list ways you can help. So leeway, allocate time, listen, allow them to process, and list the ways you can help. So avoid saying things like, let me know if you need anything. Let me know how I can help. Because remember, if their thinking is distorted, they can't process what, they can't organize their own thoughts enough to say, I need help with laundry, or I need help with, I, I forgot I need these groceries. So the best thing we can do is be ready with a list of ways we can help and the time and date that we can do that. Um, and that helps you so that your family isn't going to be completely, you know, turned upside down. All you're saying is this is what is in my giftedness and, and I have made time to do it. Tuesday at three o'clock, I would love to bring groceries to you. I'm already going to the store. What can I get you? Something as simple as that. Um, or I would love to have a call with you every week, Tuesday at three o'clock. Can I call you? And we, we just chat and catch up. Great. Um, we also will have for you in the comments um, a resource guide that Legacy has put together, as well as um, other organizations that um, have resources combined as well. So we'll put those in the comments for you. So that leads us to uh, the conclusion. Thanks for bearing with me here. If you've reached out to everyone of your 12, um, if you're already in constant contact with them and there is not an immediate need, which means you've talked to all of them in the past few days um, and there's not an immediate need. Um, we'll also include in the comments some ways that you can lean into other organizations who are providing for hospitals, governments, um, first responders, and those that are in need. So, um, but I do wanna encourage that each of us um, just reach out to one a day. Now, obviously, if they live under your roof, I hope you're connecting with them more than once a day. But um, for those that live outside of your home, just try to make it a goal. One person a day outside of your family that you are connecting with in a personal way. Um, let's wrap this up. I just, I just want to make sure that um, we don't let um, the enemy take this opportunity to lean in well. And so um, Jesus is more than enough for us. And he's got more than enough to pour through us. And so in moments where we feel like I don't even have enough to give to my kids, that's just an indication for us to turn in to the Lord, ask um, a believer for encouragement so that we can get back to that place where we're overflowing so that we can fill others. 
and we know that he will not run out of the resources there. So remember to pop, pray his promises, organize your emotions, plan our actions. I'm going to pray. Like I said, don't forget, there's going to be plenty of resources for you in the comments, but let me pray. God, you are good. You see every person that longs so much for your name to be made known through all of this. God, we are hurting for people who are sick and who have family members who have lost their lives. God, we know that there's going to be an extensive financial impact for all of this. We see it, and um, God, I just ask that you are our peace, the peace that passes all understanding, and that we are turning to you more than we ever have before because the crisis in front of us is more than many of us have ever dealt with before. So God, may we lean first on you, and then from there, God, fill us so we can bring your peace with us as we go. In your name, Jesus, amen. All right, guys, thanks. We will stay in touch because I want to keep the conversation going. Feel free to put any questions or comments in the uh, comment section and we will get back to you. Love you guys.